Well, hello, and welcome to my latest video. Now, some of you will know that I have recently completed Land's End to John O'Groats, 930 miles across the length and breadth of Britain. And there is a video, a rather long video, I'm sorry to say, uh, about my journey, which you can find on my channel. But I thought I'd do uh, what I said I'd do, in fact, which is uh, a number of follow-up videos giving perhaps some uh, lessons from the trip and also some uh, advice, guidance, suggestions that uh, some people may find useful if you're going to do the jog or if you're going to do a similar uh, long distance journey. So this is uh, the first video in a series and it's about the bike. Now, I was on a um, organized tour with a company called Bike Adventures and there were 20 riders in the group. And the bikes they had varied from a Pinarello uh, Dogma F12 with Dura Ace Di2 and great big fat 80 millimeter wheels and the ceramic jockey wheels that couldn't have cost much less than 12 grand to uh, one of the fellows who had a, a, a Merlin, a fairly ancient Merlin, which he'd bought on Gumtree for 400 quid. So the first thing to say is you can do the jog on any bike that you want to and any bike that you own. And if you've got a not very good bike and you think, oh, well, I'm going to be in a group with lots of people with flash bikes, don't worry. That is not the issue. As Lance Armstrong famously said uh, when he was famous, it's not about the bike. If you are lucky enough, however, to have a couple of bikes or even more than a couple of bikes and you're trying to choose which bike to use, then my suggestions are as follows. Now, I used an Orbea Terra bike, which is a gravel bike, and a gravel bike has a number of advantages. Uh, it generally has a more relaxed uh, geometry and therefore it's more comfortable on a long distance ride. Uh, it generally has lower gears than you would find on a normal kind of road bike. I mean, that's arguable, I suppose. Uh, it's generally got disc brakes. It's generally got wider tires, all of which I think are good things for the job because the prime consideration, in my humble opinion, is comfort. You're going to be riding for the best part of 100 miles a day and on our trip that was for nine days and if you've got an uncomfortable bike you will rue the day, believe me. So if all you've got is a fast uh, lightweight, really aero road bike, well then use that. That's what you've got. But if you can get something or if you can use a bike that's uh, a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more softer in the geometry, then I would say that would be a good thing. And the uh, choice of bikes so is entirely up to you. Um, what I would suggest though is, is the bike that I used, which was the Orbea Tower, was pretty new actually. I've only, I'd only ridden it for a few weeks. And I would not recommend uh, either taking any piece of kit or, or riding any type of bicycle or, or anything like that that you have not used for, let's say, three months or ridden for a thousand miles because you do not want to be surprised on a trip like this uh, by something either about your bike or about your kit that you're not quite familiar with and that seems a bit weird. Now luckily, and big shout out to Fab Bikes in um, Farmer in Kent. Uh, I'd had the Orbea for a couple of ride, a couple of weeks, been for a couple of rides on it, very long rides. I uh, thought the gears needed adjusting, popped into the bike shop and boom, yes, they fixed it in a matter of moments and they tightened up a number of bolts which were not quite at the correct torque. So, okay, um, if whatever bike you take, do make sure that you have it properly serviced, properly checked, take it into your local bike shop and say to them, look, I'm going to be doing Land's End to John O'Groats, 900 miles, blah, blah, blah. Can you make sure that you check everything? One of the guys uh, had a problem with his bearings. One of the guys had a problem with his pedals. One of the guys had a problem with his cleats. That's not that's specifically the bike. But things can go wrong. And OK, you can't legislate for some uh, unfortunate accident happening on the road, but you can check and double check and check again that everything about your bike is working as smoothly as it should be. If it needs a new chain, put on a new chain. If it needs new brake discs or new brake pads, then make sure you do that. If you've got a, whole lot, if you've got a carbon bike and um, the majority of people were on carbon bikes. Three people were on uh, titanium bikes. Didn't see anybody on an aluminium bike in our group. Didn't see anybody on a steel bike 
in our group. Um, if you're interested in brands, the uh, biggest brand represented was Giant. Uh, one person was an, on an Orbea, that was me, one on a Specialized. There were two people on Cannondale's, two people on Pinarello's. Um, what else? There was an Enigma, that was one of the titanium bikes, a, List, a Linsky and a Planet X, they were the titanium bikes. Uh, there was also a Ribble, a Merlin, as I said. Um, what else? Uh, a Look. Yeah, so pretty much every bike was represented. Uh, there was a Scott as well, uh, but the uh, biggest number of bikes were Giants, either Defies or TCRs. And why not? They're good bikes. So whatever bike you choose, make sure you choose wisely. Uh, if all you've got is the bike you've got, then use the bike you've got. As Crosby, Stills and Nash famously said, if the only bike is the bike you've got, then love the bike you've got. More videos coming up. See you soon.